What's happening, guys? Welcome back to Wannabe Tuners, where we play around and try to go fast. So, we're going to talk about ECU tuning in this video, or this series of videos, rather. This is episode one, and this is going to be a multi-part series. And the reason for that is there's just too much information for me to share in one video. So, I'm going to have to start with some basics first, and then we'll kind of move into some more technical stuff but primarily, we're going to cover how to tune, how I like to tune my 2009 Mazda Speed 3 right here. I've had the car since 2012. I've learned how to tune it quite well, you know, over the years. Did a lot of research, did a lot of trial and error, asked a lot of questions, all that kind of stuff, a lot of modifications. Things have cooled down a little bit, and I'm not really driving the car in the winter. I figured, you know what, maybe this would be a good idea to just put out a few videos on ECU tuning. So... <clears throat> This is primarily just to kind of share a little bit, share some of the knowledge that I've got in my noggin. So today's video, we're talking about boost based tuning versus load based tuning and the difference between the two and what works for you, what works for me, what I like to use. Personally, I like to use boost based tuning and boost based tuning is basically where instead of you're basically just targeting a specific boost pressure number, boost pressure value, and that's it. That's boost-based tuning. Whereas load-based tuning is a little more complicated. You're targeting a specific amount of airflow. Well, you're targeting a specific load value rather than a boost pressure value um, in boost-based tuning. And what is load-based? What is, what is a load value? A load value is basically a, deriv a, a derivative of the amount of airflow going into the engine. So the more airflow that the engine is receiving, the more load you're going to get, right? The higher the load number is or the load value is going to be. So when you're targeting load, you're targeting a specific load number then the ECU has to do all these different things to try and meet that load target value, which essentially is meeting a specific airflow value. So for example, if you're targeting 2.0 load and the ECU is always hitting 2.0 load in varying ambient temperatures, you're going to get pretty consistent power because you're essentially achieving consistent airflow. Load is a derivative of the amount of airflow. So you can look at load that way. Look at load as a target for the amount of airflow. And the reason why that's important is because airflow will vary based on the temperature of the air outside. If it's really cold outside, the air is gonna be more dense. You're gonna have more oxygen packed into a smaller space. You're gonna be able to cram more oxygen into the cylinders in colder weather than in hotter weather so you're going to make more power when it's colder out, right? Because there's more airflow, which means there's more load. If it's the middle of the summer, in order to achieve the same amount of airflow through the engine that you would normally see in the winter time, you will then have to increase the amount of boost pressure to feed the engine that same amount of airflow. So with a load based tune, in order to achieve the same load value, the ECU is going to have to modulate the amount of boost, right? So in, in the summer, it's gonna have to increase the boost to meet the same amount of airflow that you see in the winter time, where in the winter time, it might require less boost to achieve that same amount of airflow. So for example, if you need 20 pounds of boost to achieve a given amount of airflow in the winter time you might only need 18 pounds of boost to achieve that same amount of airflow and if you achieve the same amount of airflow between the summer and the winter you're essentially making roughly the same power the same torque the engine's going to make more consistent power across the board in varying temperatures right and that's why a lot of oem manufacturers have their tune set up this way in a load-based tuning strategy where they're targeting a specific load or specific airflow 
to make sure that they're making consistent power in varying ambient temperatures and conditions and stuff like that. That gets complicated when you start upgrading to bigger turbos and different things of that sort because when you start increasing power output, you need to increase the efficiency of the entire setup. Is it possible to do a load based tune on a big turbo? Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't have that much experience with it, but what I do is the opposite. I do a boost based tuning strategy. Lately, that's what I've been doing. Um, and a boost based tuning strategy, if you can take a guess on what that might be, instead of targeting a load value or a specific airflow value, you are now targeting a specific boost pressure value, which is basically a lot simpler. Instead of me trying to figure out how to modulate and tweak the boost to achieve the same airflow, I'm essentially just targeting the same boost pressure number, boost pressure number, whether it's summer or winter. It's going to be the same number. Let's say I'm targeting 20 PSI in the summer. I'm targeting 20 PSI in the winter. Now the difference here is 20 PSI in the summer is not going to be the same as 20 PSI in the winter because 20 PSI in the winter is going to flow a lot more air into that engine. It's going to make a lot more power at 20 pounds of boost, right? Quite a bit more power. So you will notice that if you tune your car for power in the summer, at 20 pounds of boost, let's say. When winter comes around, if you drive the car in colder temperatures and you're still achieving 20 pounds of boost, you're gonna notice that the car feels faster. So you gotta be careful in that sense because if you're running like 91 octane, for example, and you're doing 20 pounds of boost in the winter with a specific amount of ignition timing, let's say, and you're not getting any detonation or knock in your data logs, and then all of a sudden you start moving into colder temperatures as the winter approaches. And all of a sudden your data logs are showing excessive amounts of knock. You got to consider increasing the octane of your fuel because you did all your tuning in the summer where there was less airflow. Less airflow into the engine means lower cylinder pressures, lower power output, lower heat in the cylinder. So not as much knock happening, right? As Soon as the winter comes around, You've got a lot more air density, a lot more oxygen being fed into those cylinders, increasing the cylinder pressure, increases the cylinder temperatures. Now all of a sudden you're running into knock detonation. Your 91 octane can't handle it, let's say, right? So what I would recommend is if you're gonna do boost-based tuning or any tuning realistically, whether it's load-based or boost-based, you kinda wanna do your power tuning when it's a little bit cooler out, right? Because obviously you're not gonna do tuning when it's freezing outside because you might slip. You don't want to slide around because when you're doing a data log, you got to be doing third gear, but I would recommend fourth gear because it's more load on the engine. You're going to get a more accurate um, representation of what your fuel can handle in terms of knock resistance because if you're running 91 octane, you want to make sure you're doing it in fourth to make sure that you're not getting any detonation in the colder temperatures as well, because you wanna make sure you're pushing that limit of what the fuel can handle. Because like I said, colder temperatures are gonna give you more cylinder pressures, higher cylinder temperatures, all that kind of stuff. Usually, you would I would recommend tuning in cooler weather, the coldest weather the car will see. Now, if you're not driving it in the winter and you primarily drive it in the fall when it gets cooler out, do your tuning primarily when it gets colder out. That way you know when summertime comes around, you're not gonna run into any detonation, right? So that's the difference between boost-based tuning and load-based tuning, right? Like we said, boost-based tuning, we're specifically targeting a specific boost pressure value, whether it's hot or cold outside, so it simplifies things. Load-based tuning, we're targeting a specific load value, which is derived from the amount of airflow going into the engine. So the higher the amount of airflow, the higher the amount of load. And then in order to achieve the same amount of airflow or load, we have to vary the amount of boost pressure based on varying ambient temperatures. So there's a lot more different tables in the ECU that have to be tweaked and modified. It complicates things a little bit. But there is a third way um, that... I used to do quite often when I was on the KO4 turbo, and that is a hybrid tuning method. 
And what that is, is basically you are targeting a specific boost pressure value, just like you would in boost bass tuning. But like I said, let's say you're tuning, let's say you're, for whatever reason, you decided you wanted to tune in the heat of the summer, super hot summer, um, and you're targeting 20 PSI boost. Um, what you could then do is with a hybrid tuning method, you could then put in place what's known as load caps because the software will still cap off load even though you're specifically doing a boost based strategy the ecu can still cap off peak airflow so for example if i'm hitting 20 pounds of boost in the heat of the summer and my airflow is let's say just for just for an example let's say it's 300 grams per second of air flowing through the engine at 20 pounds of boost at like red line right at like 6700 rpm let's say 20 pounds of boost 300 grams per second um, at 6700 rpm in the heat of the summer what i can do now is i can then look at my data logs and say hey what is the load value that corresponds to this grams per second airflow value let's say that load value is a value of two 2.00 let's say you could then go into your load tables within the software and say make 2.00 my load cap right boom i input that value so what happens is as we get into the colder weather now the ecu is going to see that we're approaching a 2.00 load and that we're about to exceed it so what's going to happen is now your ecu might reduce the boost to let's say 19 or even 18 pounds of boost so that it doesn't exceed that 2.00 load cap that you determined in the summertime during your data logs. Does that make sense? So, but I wouldn't recommend doing it that way. What I would recommend doing is, like I said, tune the car in the coldest weather the car, the, the coldest weather the car is going to see so you can get an accurate representation of what the peak load values will actually be and so you can realize what the actual amount of knock resistance is of the specific fuel that you're using in the coldest possible temperatures where the cylinder pressures are going to be the highest and the cylinder temperatures are going to be the highest that's why it's good to do it in the cooler temperatures um then what you can do is then when you drive it in the summer you're guaranteed you're not going to hit that amount of airflow right per se so just a little bit there for episode one guys the difference between boost based tuning versus load based tuning and then combining the two with hybrid tuning which is where you input load caps put some load caps in place but then the takeaway is also primarily you would want to do your tuning in the coldest weather the car is going to see so you can get an accurate depiction of how much octane whether or not your octane and the fuel is high enough to keep knock under control and also to see what peak airflow is going to be so you can put low caps in place if you decide to do hybrid tuning but that's pretty much it for this video guys um see you in the next one we'll see what we can talk about we'll get into some other ecu tuning type stuff before we jump in to more intricate stuff but yeah Understanding the difference between boost-based and load-based tuning, super important, because we're gonna need to know that when we get into the actual tuning software with Cobb Access Tuner. Talk to you guys soon.